So I want to share a couple pieces from Comme des Garçons Om that I picked up a couple days ago. I had around 30 minutes just to kill somewhere and I saw a secondhand shop that I'd never been to before. Honestly, didn't expect it to be any good just because secondhand shop curation here in Dallas I'm not usually a big fan of. It doesn't really suit uh, my style, but I had 30 minutes to kill and so just wanted to walk in, check it out and see what they had and it's called Second Street, and I now realize it's a chain across the country and kind of known for carrying designers and Japanese secondhand. So I didn't know that walking in, but I very quickly discovered it when I went to the first rack and I saw Antimillimeter, then Kinzo, then a YSL vest, then I saw Yoji, and then I saw a couple Comme des Garçons pieces. And so I very quickly gathered up a couple pieces, went to the dressing room, and this is the first blazer that I tried on, and I absolutely, fell in love. It fits really, really good. It's a Comme des Garçons Homme Plus, which means it's a more premium menswear line designed by Ray Calcubo, which the second blazer I'm going to show you in just a minute is just the normal Ohm line, and I think it's designed by Junior Watanabe. Um, like I said, this is the Plus line, so it's 100% wool, very thick, and it's from 1990, and it's in perfect vintage condition. It looks like it's never been worn, doesn't have any weird smells, anything like that. It even had the extra buttons in the front pocket. When I first tried it on, I noticed it still had that. If any of these buttons were to fall off, I have extra buttons. So literally it looks brand new, never been worn. Probably just been sitting in someone's closet for over 30 years at this point. And you can really tell in the 90s silhouette, has the broader shoulders and comes in just a little bit. It's a great length and I'm just really happy with the fit of it overall. It's in black and it's in this very textural wool so you can tell it's very good quality and it was $180 and I know Comme des Garçons own plus blazers typically go for much more even on the secondhand market but I know retail these days they're well over a thousand dollars so to find one for less than 200 was honestly such a steal especially being vintage from 1990 one of the earlier collections um, in Ray Kawakubo's long career with Comme des Garçons so I was super happy to find it I've been wearing it every day since I got it, which has only been like two days ago, but this morning, this is literally what I wore this morning to take my wife to work at like 8 a.m. It's just a pair of black wool pants. I'm wearing Prada loafers, and then I threw on my, the only graphic tee that I own is this one from the 1975. I don't normally wear graphic tees, but this one's my favorite band. It was a concert I went to a couple months ago, um, so it has more of like a personal value to me and so I wore it just to make it a little bit more casual than the button up or underneath and it was a little bit cold still this morning so then I just threw the blazer on and it was perfect. This outfit feels very me. I always wear black wool pants. I love a broad shoulder, a wool blazer, still an element of effortlessness and casualness and also a personal touch so this to me just feels like a very good representation of my style. But again, I'm just so happy to have found this blazer. I've honestly been looking for more Comme des Garçons own blazers because they make my favorite blazers, the cut, the quality, just the overall structure of them, and they fit really nicely on me. Um, so I've been just looking on eBay, Vestiaire, all that kind of stuff, and I wasn't really finding anything um, that I liked that wasn't hundreds of dollars, so it was super, super cool to go in there and find a piece. So now I'll show you the second one. So this is the second one, and like I said, this is from the normal Ohm line, and it's in cotton. And I don't have any blazers in cotton, so I was excited to find a little bit of different fabric so I can play around with different textures within my wardrobe. I love to play around with different textures, and this one is a small. It's slightly too small of me, but I definitely think I can make it work, because it is my size, but if I were to gain any width, I think specifically in my shoulders, I would probably outgrow it. Um, I don't know if that's gonna happen, but if it does, it, this was actually only $80, which to me, a Comme des Garçons own blazer for less than $100 is pretty crazy. This one is from 2010, I believe, based on the tag, and it has these continued buttonholes that kind of go up the lapel for a nice little detail. 
So it's in black and then the white contrasted buttonholes that function normally until you get up to the lapel. And I just think it's such a nice little detail and very representative of my style, taking a classic piece such as a blazer and just adding something to it that makes it a little bit more interesting, a little bit of an eye-catching detail that you normally wouldn't see on other blazers with the buttonholes continuing up the lapel. Um, so I'll insert some clips of it on with an outfit. I wore it yesterday also later on in the day styled with my Le Mer denim twist trousers and my Margiela tabby boots and I really like to wear something slimmer on top and then more baggier and sculptural on the bottom and it's just a really good silhouette. I think it's pretty flattering for my body type and something I feel really comfortable in. So excited to have this blazer around to play around with that silhouette a little bit more. I'll go ahead and share a couple other things that I picked up. Before I went there, I actually went to just a couple other basic thrift stores. I've been pretty vocal in the past. I made a TikTok a couple months ago about how I'm not really thrifting anymore in 2024, which has mostly really been true. I honestly have tried to go to the thrift store, but because of where my style is at and the things that I'm looking for, now, which are a little bit more unique and special pieces, I'm really more specific about the fit that I know that I like and I want to go after. And a lot of holes in my wardrobe are already filled, so I don't need many basics or foundational items. So going to the thrift store has been really difficult for me because, well, one, I haven't found anything, but even the stuff that's there just has not been good quality, has not been in good condition, and so I have really had no luck going to the thrift store. And also, it's just really hard to find my size. If you're a size like 34, 36, 38, thrift stores are incredible for you for pants and for blazers, but for me, it's been really difficult to find anything. But one thing for summer that I do like to wear and find are button-ups, but I like to take the sleeves off. So I just use a little seam ripper kind of thing and take the threads off individually, and it looks really well done. And so I saw an Andy Mulemeister shirt about a year ago that was just a sleeveless button-up, but it was like five or $600, and I wasn't gonna pay that for a button-up. And so I just bought a white button up and took the sleeves off. I wore it a lot last summer. I did with a black one, wore it a lot. Now Helmet Lane came out with some. Still really like the style. And I was looking through the shirts in the thrift store. And I saw this one, which was a very, it's a tuxedo shirt. So it's a very classic menswear shape, menswear shirt. But again, taking those classic pieces and making them a little bit more unique and different and a different detail is something that I love to do. So I love taking a classic menswear shirt like this, a tuxedo shirt. I honestly really love the pleating um, and recontextualize it to a summer casual shirt by taking the sleeves off. And again, it was super easy to take the sleeves off and it looks really well done. As long as you take your time with it, it is a little bit of a tedious task and it can go wrong very fast. So you just have to be careful with how you're taking the threads out, but I'll be excited to wear this throughout the summer. And on that same wave, I've also been wanting to do some DIY project with the blazer. I want to get a black blazer and kind of fray around the lapels, the sleeves and the bottom of the blazer just to kind of give it a little bit of a more deconstructed feel. And then in the same vein as that, I really like sleeveless blazers. I've seen a couple from the brand row frames, I think that's how you say it, and then Helmet Link also came out with one. Honestly, a lot of brands have sleeveless blazers and I really like them. I don't have hundreds of dollars to spend right now on a blazer like that, so I just went to the thrift store. I got a black blazer that fit me a little bit more slim throughout the waist for that kind of silhouette, and I took the sleeves off. This one was definitely more difficult to take the sleeves off compared to just a cotton shirt because there was like multiple threads, multiple layers, and as you can see, you can still see the lining and different stuff through it, which I really just think leans into that deconstruction um, kind of garment. And so I'm really happy with it, honestly. I'll try it on. So here it is on, and I honestly didn't imagine it layered like this with a button-up and t-shirt on underneath. I more imagined with just a really simple tank top or honestly wearing it with nothing underneath for the summer, but I quite like the layering look, again, with the t-shirt, the button-up, and then just the little sleeveless blazer over top. So this is gonna be a great piece for summer. It's gonna be a little bit casual because it's a blazer with the sleeves ripped off, with the lining showing, so it's gonna give that more casual feel, but still a little bit of refinement still being a blazer shape. So that's probably one of my absolute biggest tips right now for summer dressing, for warm weather dressing, which I'm gonna do a video about is just finding items and just taking the sleeves off, finding items that you wear in the fall and in the winter, outside of probably coats, unless you get like a really thin cotton coat that you take the sleeves off, that could probably look actually really cool to wear um, in the summer if it's not like crazy hot where you are. 
In Dallas, it's too hot to even wear that many layers because it's over 100 every day for months. Um, but just really being inventive and not being scared to DIY and play around with your clothes is something that I'm thinking a lot about. So I've just been taking the blazer, shirts, different things like that and finding new ways to invent them. So two days after that, I discovered that the store that I got the Comme des Garcons pieces from, 2nd Street, actually had a second location very close to me, like literally an eight minute drive. And I was browsing online to see what they had and I discovered they had these Comme des Garcons Homme Plus shorts from the fall 2023 collection which are very avant-garde. They have these almost two places that you can put the legs, very layered, kind of looks like a skirt. Went in store, fell in love, and they were way cheaper online than they were in person. And then I also have been wanting a black vest for a very, very long time. Have not been able to find one anywhere. And I ended up finding one from this brand number nine, which I've also learned is a Japanese brand that I believe was discontinued. I don't know a lot about this brand, but this piece is beautiful. It's in a wool polyester silk mix, and I definitely want to learn more about it. It's a very good fit, and I definitely want to layer it, but also wear it sleeveless with absolutely nothing underneath it for the summer months. Layered my Comme des Garcons own blazer that I picked up from Grailed a couple months ago, probably three, four months ago. Favorite blazer of all time. Love it. It's from 2001, and kind of styled it all together just to see how it fit. This is a very Comme des Garcons look to me with all the tailoring going on. I want to talk about another way that I really like to style things that I think is really key and central to my personal style and it's creating contrast within your outfit and the way I often like to do that is pairing a piece such as these Comme des Garcons shorts that are very elevated, they're not a basic at all, they're, they're loud with the design being different with the fabric, with the word, everything about them is loud. And I really just wanna let them be the focal point of the outfit, but I also wanna tone them down just a little bit. I did like the way I previously styled them in the clip, but that is like very, just like going full force in every direction with the layering of the vest, with the button up, with the blazer, kind of everything. But if I'm going out on a more everyday basis, I really like to create more of a casual feel to my outfit, but I still like to wear my special and elevated pieces and still wanna be fashion forward in some way to communicate that part of my identity to the world pretty much at all times. I always like to be communicating that and feeling like myself that I'm represented in that way, but still striking a balance with being a little more casual. And the way I do that is taking this piece, such as the Comme des Garcons Homme Plus shorts, mixing it with a very ratty t-shirt. This t-shirt I have had for years and years and years. It had holes throughout the back. It fits kind of awfully. It just, it looks bad. It's wrinkly right now. Everything about it looks ratty. And yet paired with this shirt, I think that contrast is so interesting to me because normally you wouldn't think to wear a ratty ratty t-shirt with one of your nicest pieces in your wardrobe and then I mix it still with leather shoes, with my glasses, with my normal jewelry, everything, but I think just adding in a piece again that just looks not as nice and elevated just is a really good and interesting way to build contrast and interest with your outfit and remaining a little bit more casual. So one thing I really feel like I'm doing a lot of right now is just trying to learn and research as much about fashion and the designers that I love. And specifically I love right now the Japanese designers, Rei Kawakubo, Izemiyake, Yoji Yamamoto. I love both their designs, but also their philosophies and their stories and their belief systems and the way that they design like so much more than just clothes but also philosophies around garments and like even like the reverence they have for garments and building brands that are really meaningful and collaborations with other artists and just the respect they have for the getting dressed and clothing just in general is super inspiring to me. So I've been researching a lot and I've started to read this book yesterday it's called Japanese Fashion Designers, and the author is Bonnie English. I'm only like a chapter or two in, and it's just been so interesting to read more about their perspectives, how they got started. I've already read like different articles and interviews and heard stories, so I'm excited to be reading this more in-depth analysis of their work and their impact on the fashion industry. Also, I do wanna talk about a couple things that I got in the mail in the last week or so ago. Uh, we can start with a couple of fragrances that I've been liking. So I've been pretty much exclusively being, been wearing Le Labo for 
five years now. I absolutely love their scents. My favorites are Another 13, Rose 31, but I really haven't had a fragrance from them that I don't like. I love their new one, the Lavender one. I love Tobacco 28, the Miami City exclusive. I just, I really like the Lavo. But I recently got this Valentino fragrance scent in the mail. And I'm gonna be honest, I normally do not like the more mainstream designer fragrances, like the Valentino. When I was growing up, I loved like Burberry and YSL and the Chanel Blue fragrance, which I, I still like Chanel Blue. Um, but you know, like all those, like the Gucci, those kind of fragrances, I haven't really tried them out in a couple years, so maybe there are some good ones now. Um, but I typically do not like them because they just are very alcohol based, they smell very artificial. So I was very skeptical about this Valentino one. I really only accepted it because I wanted to just try and grow my portfolio for creating content for more lifestyle and fragrances and that kind of thing. But surprisingly, I really like this one. So this one is the Valentino Born in Rome Green Stravaganza, and its notes are citrus coffee, aromic, fresh, spicy, woodsy, and it really is such a clean fragrance. I think I'm gonna be wearing it a lot this summer. I'm not so sure because I typically, even myself, can't smell fragrances on myself after a couple hours no matter what. So I'm not so sure about the longevity of it, but I really like how it smells when it's right out of the bottle. Very fresh, very clean, um, not artificial at all. And I think it'd be really good just for summer. I like, it's like slightly sweet, like that citrus really comes through for me. I don't really smell the coffee, but I also don't know that I wanna smell like coffee on my fragrance. But yeah, really like it. And then I just got this one in the mail a couple days ago. And I've been wanting to try this brand, Malin and Gotez, for a while. This one is very intriguing. It smells, honestly, my wife works at a hair salon and it kind of reminds me of those smells at a hair salon. Just very, it's very sweet. It smells, I mean, it's called dark rum. Let me see what the notes are. So the notes are fruity, leather, sweet, rum. And I love leather scents. And also, again, just for summer, I've been wanting a couple of new fragrances. And, and this is like sweet, but it doesn't give me a headache. Like sometimes very sweet fragrances will very quickly give me a headache, but this one doesn't. And then I also got the candle for it, which I really love candles. And it's just a really pleasant scent, honestly. It smells, it's a parfum. So it's 20% rum oil. I think, and then this one is 16%, the candle is 16% oil, and does not smell, again, artificial at all, cannot stand when scents smell artificial, but I'm enjoying this one. I think oftentimes fragrances will grow on me, and I'll like them a lot more the more that I smell them. I think there's been so many, like, Tabac 28 from Le Labo, when I first smelled it, I absolutely hated it. It smelled like burnt cigarettes but it really grew on me after a while when your nose gets used to it. And then also when you put it on your skin, it just smells different too than when you like are just spraying it in the air, especially please never test fragrances on those little plastic strips. I think that is just not a good way to smell fragrances. Really take the time, get a sample if you can, spray it on your body at the store and sit with it for a while. It's gonna smell different when it mixes with your skin oils, when it's on your body, it's gonna smell different when it dries down. All the things I'm sure you already know about fragrances, um, I think it's really important not to smell them on those plastic things.